Good morning. Welcome back. Today we are going to learn pricing under factors of production, which is the module number four for economics of executives, BB Aviation, second semester. Let's get started to learn the different kinds of pricing for the factors of production. In this chapter, the contents has been divided into three parts. The first one is under wages. You are going to learn one theory, namely marginal productivity theory. The second one is interest, where you are going to learn one theory called Keynes liquidity preference theory. And the third part is about profits, where you are learning three major theories. The first one is dynamic theory of profit. Second one is risk theory. And the third one is uncertainty. Here in the contents part, we are only going to learn about three factors of production. One is labor, second one is capital, and the third one is organization or entrepreneurship. We are not learning about land here. The first part we are going to learn is about pricing under factors of production. Introduction part. What is factors of production? Or what is factor pricing? will be told in this slide. Factor production can be defined as inputs used for producing goods or services with the aim to make economic profit. If you want to gain profit in your business, you need to bring on the inputs and the inputs in the other words will be called as factors of production. As we know, we have four factors of production. If we bring them all together to prepare goods and services, with an aim to make economic profit. The next, as I said, there are four factors of production and an entrepreneur is the one active factor who is going to bring or align all these factors of production together. And whatever he pays back to these factors are called as factor pricing. The theory of factor pricing is dealing about with the prices paid for the factor services. Suppose, if you are using land, we will give them rent. If you are using labor, we will give them wages. If you are using capital, we will give them interest. If the entrepreneur is himself in uh, doing the business, then he will get the profit. So, we are giving the prices for all the four factors of production which we are using. In short, the factor pricing theory studies how to rent the land, how to pay wages to the labor, interest to the capital and profit to the entrepreneur will be determined from this basic theory called as factor pricing theory. In this slide, we are learning about what are the rewards or what are the prices paid to the different factors of production. I have in the left hand side, I have mentioned about land, labor, capital and entrepreneur. In the right side, I have mentioned about its rewards or its prices. For land, I said, we'll give them rent. For labor, we'll give them wages. For capital, we'll give them interest. And for entrepreneur, we'll give them profit. This is the first theory of wages. We are learning about labor here. So for labor, what is the one which we'll give in return? We'll give them wages. So the first basic theory for giving wages will be called as a theory called marginal productivity theory. What is this marginal productivity theory? Before understanding this theory, we need to know two key words. The first key word is the simple one called wages. The second key word is the marginal productivity. For wages, I have mentioned that it is the remuneration paid to the labor in return of the service rendered. So, if we hire labor, he will do some service for us. Whatever the service he is doing for us, we will give them money in terms of wages. So, that is called as wages in terms of remuneration paid to the labor. There is one definition given by Benham. A wage may be defined as a sum of money paid under contract by an employer to a worker in exchange of the service rendered. Here you are supposed to know the contract. The employer and the employee will come into a contract. For example, suppose I say you will be hired with me. That means you will be working with me for a year. For a year will be kind of a contract. 
and what is that I am going to give you that will also come in the contract. So the employer will come into the contract with employee and give him the money for the service he rendered to the employer. So if the labor is giving service, we will pay them the wage. Next term is about marginal productivity. This is referring to an extra output gained by adding one unit of labor. Other inputs are held constant. Here, for example, you had five laborers and you were producing 60 products. Now you had one more laborer. You are producing around 10 products more. So for 11 laborers, you are producing 70. What is the productivity of the sixth labor? The sixth labor is 10 units or 15 units. Like that you will calculate for each labor how much they are contributing to the production activity. If you define that, that is called marginal productivity. Yeah. What is this marginal productivity theory of wages states? Yes. It is the price of labor. That is the wage rate is determined according to the marginal product of labor. That means simply if we hire laborers, we are not supposed to give them the salary according to the work they make. How does we shall decide upon what work or how much are they contributing? According to that, whatever they are contributing, earlier what was the output, now after they coming in, what is the output? If we divide that, Clearly, we will get to know the productivity of the person hired. So, that productivity, according to that productivity itself, we are supposed to pay the price for the labor. That is called marginal productivity theory of wages. Who gave this theory? This theory was formed by neoclassical economists, especially by J.B. Clark. J.B. Clark is one of the important neoclassical economists who gave us the theory in the late 1890s. So here you have learned the meaning of wages. You have learned the term of marginal productivity and you also learned what is the meaning of MPT theory of wages. Marginal productivity theory of wages. Next, what are the assumptions? The assumptions are law of variable proportion operates. What is variable proportion says? It says that you can vary the inputs. According to, to get the decided output, you can vary the inputs. That's called variable proportion theory. And the firm aims at profit maximization. Definitely whatever business people do, do they do for profit maximization, isn't it? Next, all the laborers are homogeneous and are divisible. Equally, we can divide the labor into their marginal productivity and all laborers are the same kind. That means homogeneous. Having the same capacity, same skill, same nature, everything same. Next, labor is mobile and substitutable to capital and other inputs. If we want to substitute capital to labor or labor to capital, we can do that. They say labor is mobile. That means what? If we have the job in Bangalore, he will do the job in Bangalore. Tomorrow we say that the job is in Mumbai, definitely he will move on to Mumbai. That means labor is mobile. He can move from one place to another place. Next one. Resources are fully employed. We are not under utilizing any resources here. We will utilize all the resources. If all the resources are fully employed, then this theory of marginal productivity works. Last one is perfect computation prevails in the market and in the labor market. There are two kinds of market. One is product market where products are bought and sold. There is another market called labor market where laborers are bought and sold. Wherever you find in perfect computation, what and all features you uh, no, listened? Do, can you recall? We decided that it's producing homogeneous product and everybody will have every information. There is no uh, you know, barriers to entry and exit. So all these things we learned and all these things will work here even in the product market and in the labor market. So we have six assumptions to note. Next, 
for this marginal productivity theory we have one diagram the easy diagram that easy diagram will be explained here see the equilibrium wage rate is determined at point e because at this point both arp and mrp is equal first let's assume that you are filling the equilibrium point where equilibrium point is determined where your mrp and arp is equal and that point you will fix the wage rate yeah what is this mrp marginal rate of production average rate of production next therefore the ideal situation for the firm is to employ workers up to point where arp and mrp is equal wherever you are finding the equal point at that point you will find the or fix the wage rate next the number of laborers is measured in ox axis in the x axis we are mentioning the number of laborers in the y axis we are mentioning the wage rate ERP is MRP is marginal productivity and average revenue productivity we have. The equilibrium wage rate will be at a point where both ERP and MRP meet at the point E as we already discussed. The firm will fix the OW wage rate and it will employ only OX of number of laborers. I think you understood the diagram. There, there are two important points. One is where the point of ERP and MRP meets that is the point where the wage rate will be fixed according to the wage rate wages will be given and the number of laborers will be employed next you have some criticisms for this theory this theory says that it is one sided because it is only talking about demand side supply side is ignored completely because we say that there is a marginal productivity of laborer. We say that there is a demand. But we do not know whether the supply of the homogeneous laborers is there or not. So this market or the marginal productivity theory doesn't focus on the supply side. That's a major criticism. Second one is wager can never be more or less than marginal product of labor. They say that marginal productivity of labor according to that we must pay the wages. But what can happen is it is not every time you pay the exact. It can be more or less. Anything can happen. The third one is the theory is based on the assumption of perfect computation. But perfect computation is not at all real as we know. So perfect computation, assuming perfect computation is a major criticism for this MPT theory. The next is conclusion. How do you conclude? For all these defects of marginal productivity theory is not considered to be satisfactory as the determination of wage rate in a free market. So the other theories have been developed to find out how can we fix the wages to the employees what they work for us. Yeah, this is the conclusion you are supposed to write and the other theories have developed to find out what best wages can be paid to the laborers. I hope you have understood MPT theory. Let's have a quick run. This is marginal productivity theory where you have learned the meaning of wages, meaning of marginal productivity and the theory statement. The next you came to the assumptions where we listed out six assumptions. Now we have moved on to the diagram portion. In the diagram portion, what does OX axis mean? What does OY axis mean? What is the equilibrium rate and what are the other components I have explained. Next we jumped on to the criticisms where we have three major criticisms and we concluded the theory is not satisfactory and there are other theories being developed to give the better marginal wage rate for the employees.